Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Sivar Tankamani, an integration technical architect. In this video, I am going to present to you an use case about uh, how to design the API in order to handle high volume transactions. So, we can take a practical use case and then uh, let's understand the requirements and then we can go ahead uh, with the design and the implementation process. So let's consider the use case is uh, uh, order management. So which means we are going to get orders from the customer and uh, the API is responsible to retrieve, process and deliver to uh, order fulfillment system. And uh, we have certain SLAs uh, uh, for this particular use case. Let's see what they are. There are three requirements that indirectly indicate the SLA, which we are going to see what they are. Number one, it's transactional APIs, which means we are going to get uh, some data from the customer, which we, are, we will not be able to get back uh, if the transaction is lost. For example, uh, you are going to the website where you are going to order something. And if the, uh, the website is not uh, processing in the, within the stipulated time or it's behaving incorrectly, then uh, you will suddenly change your mind and you will go to some other site and then make that order. So uh, even a minor glitch in the network uh, will make the customer switch from uh, your business to some other business. So uh, it's transactional and hence we need to handle uh, retrieval and then manage it somehow in such a way that uh, you are not going to lose those transactions and uh, you are going to persist that data somewhere uh, permanently. Number two, we are going to have a disparate systems for sure because order receiving and order processing and the order fulfillment are going to be three different systems. And uh, imagine three systems are designed in uh, with the three different vendors. Uh, E-commerce is going to be something and uh, uh, APIs are going to be designed uh, by MuleSoft. And uh, the order fulfillment system could be Salesforce or it could be uh, some other uh, um, order processing systems. So the disparate systems often will lead to a different pace. For example, uh, one system might not be uh, equally capable of another. So we need to keep in mind that uh, different systems are uh, different in nature. The third one is expected SLA. The SLA is going to be 99% which means you, are, you can't afford to lose uh, uh, any orders to the 99% accuracy and rarely system might go down unexpected way. Um, it could be connectivity issues or it could be some other network issues which we might, we might not be uh, able to predict. Let's see how we are going to design this uh, particular requirement. So uh, we are in the middle, like the MuleSoft is going to be uh, an ESB or middleware where it's going to have multiple APIs to deal with uh, source and target systems. So uh, the design has to be carefully done in such a way that every step is directly related to the requirement, not uh, even 1% less or not even 1% more. Why such a great care in the design? Why it should directly relate to the requirements and not less, not more. It's because if you underestimate and uh, make the design overly simple, then uh, the system will not be able to sustain that many number of requests per unit time and uh, you will be losing a lot of transaction and hence you will lose the business. If you over engineer and then make infrastructure more, then you will be uh, losing in terms of money and uh, you will have excessive capability where you will have less business which might not uh, need uh, that many amount of servers. Let's go over the design step and then let's ask ourselves why this is designed that way. So we have a source system sending the customer orders uh, uh, to the middleware. So basically the APIs will, will be designed to receive the orders in the first place. So once orders are received, these orders are first persisted into the queue. And uh, so we will have either uh, VMQ or JMS queue, which we are going to see later on why we choose that way. Then the API has to consume the messages that are published into the queue, take it one by one and process it, transform it to the uh, target system format. 
and uh, first persist the orders and then uh, the process uh, has to um, uh, deliver the same into the target system so that uh, target system can start fulfilling the orders. In order to understand the design better, let's ask questions one by one and let's answer ourselves to, uh, to justify why it's designed and how it's related to the requirements. Okay, first message queue. Why message queue? So if you go back to the requirements and the SLA, the SLA clearly states that it is transactional ABI, which means uh, if you lose the order, customer order, you will not be able to ask the customer to uh, try the same website, go over and then uh, try the same order again because you will not be able to reach the customer. By the time if you reach the customer, he would have purchased in different site. So you, the order and the data are very precious which you need to uh, have it in the first place before uh, system incurs any connectivity issue or any other issue that might lose the data. So that is the reason why we have uh, a message queue, which first, as soon as it receives the data, it publishes into the queue so that the data is safe. Is there any other reason to use uh, message queue? Please think. Let's go back to the requirements. See, it's a disparate system, which means uh, 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 the order system or e-commerce system will be uh, sending hundreds of orders. However, uh, the middleware or the target system will be able to handle only um, uh, 20 orders uh, per unit time. So there is a disparity between speed and pace in which uh, the systems uh, receive and process. So and hence you need a middleman like MessageQ where you uh, persist the data and then consume it uh, in a controlled way. For example, the consumption should take place only um, uh, one message in two seconds or uh, one message per second so that uh, it goes and flows into the controlled manner. Question number three. Why do we have this database here? So we got the data, we process it one by one and uh, why do we need to have it uh, um, into the database. So imagine that you have delivered into the target system and uh, in future the target system uh, loses the data. Even though you have delivered successfully, the target system might have some uh, network or uh, some latency issue and it's not able to receive successfully. At that time, uh, maybe after a couple of days, uh, the target system might come back to you and ask, hey, this particular order we are not able to uh, see in the system but customer is complaining where is my order so at that time we as an api team should be able to give the order and make the uh, reference and then have have it and then be able to retrieve and it should have the capability to retrieve it anytime um, when required so is the design complete and uh, did we fulfill all the requirements let's go back and revisit the requirement so the expected SLA is 99%. So uh, how did we ensure that uh, SLA is 99% and then uh, what the, is the meaning that the SLA is 99%? So which means uh, um, if you receive uh, 100 orders, you should be able to successfully process 99 orders and one order can be in question sometimes uh, we might not have control over 100% uh, uh, that remaining 1%. So how do we fulfill this SLA 99%? Let's go back to the design. So here we have this uh, database and even if the target system is delivered and uh, 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 sometimes in future if they come back and say somehow they lost the data and we still be able to refer to the data back in our database repository of orders and then refer the order and then be able to submit it. So uh, uh, this design has the capability of introducing another API or processes to take the database, uh, uh, to take the orders from the database and deliver or re-deliver to the target systems, uh, whichever, the, um, system, uh, whichever the orders that has uh, failure status. So you should be able to design the system efficiently and uh, update the status into the database and uh, have the future capability to retrieve those failed orders 
and re-deliver to the target system. Now that we have completed with the design and now we can go ahead with the implementation. So I have created a Mule 4 uh, project already to demo our use case here. And uh, Mule 4 provides a lot of capabilities, uh, components and connectors in order to suit our requirements. So uh, when you are uh, using Mule 4 as a tool, you should feel comfortable and then be confident uh, to be able to implement any design. So I have three flows created already and uh, one flow is for receiving the order and one flow is for processing the order and I have one excess flow uh, which could simulate uh, creation of orders uh, probably hundreds of orders per minute and then uh, simulate uh, as per the e-commerce system. To simulate the order I have come up with some simple uh, request JSON format. Let's take a look at that. So we have the order uh, with a customer ID or some identification about the customer and what's the quantity he wants and uh, his name. So since we are going to see the demo and we are not going to have a complete, uh, this is no way the how the order is going to look like. <laughs> but uh, let's take uh, uh, for example, so we have ID, quantity and name. The application is started up and it's running fine and the scheduler is uh, uh, running fine and it starts creating the orders because uh, in the scheduler we are calling the um, request which goes to the order receiving flow. So uh, you can, as you can see here uh, the orders are created uh, uh, five times better than the receiving way because order is coming rapidly and uh, we are processing in a controlled way uh, like once in uh, five seconds you can see here the processed orders are displayed here and orders are created uh, with a random number because uh, just for simulating I have given uh, some random number for ID quantity and the correlation ID which are created randomly and uh, uh, so so far so good so uh, we are going to see uh, whether the orders are inserted into the database successfully without any issues Let's go back to the database and I have the customer orders here where the uh, orders are inserted. Let's run and see. You can see so many orders are created uh, uh, successfully with a random ID, random quantity and uh, the name test and the correlation ID. I'm happy to see this correlation ID in a distinct way because if, uh, if the customer or uh, the target system asks about the uh, uh, information that's lost then we can come back here and we can get the correlation ID from the customer and then refer to this database. So it's going good and uh, so yeah we have successfully designed the uh, order processing system and where you can insert uh, one more flow uh, as a system API where you can um, you can continue this uh, uh, order and then export it to the Salesforce or Oracle or any e-commerce fulfillment system. Now finally let's ask ourselves uh, uh, some of the information uh, to verify if they are handled correctly or not. So uh, how do we uh, do the capacity planning uh, for this? Let's go to the next slide where I have some guidance for this capacity planning. So uh, our system currently is designed for a thousand requests per minute so that uh, the queues are uh, processed in an order and uh, uh, what if the number of requests received uh, is more than uh, say 10,000 or 100,000 so then you can't afford to uh, process the orders one in one order in five seconds so at that time uh, you have to plan in a little ways how do we plan this so instead of uh, um, one worker in mule you need to do the capacity planning in terms of uh, week course. You have point 0.1, point 0.2 and one worker, one week course size and you can have a number of workers to load balance the incoming orders. So you have to choose two or more workers uh, in order to have the high availability because uh, sometimes if one worker goes uh, unresponsive, you will not even be able to uh, uh, receive the orders so that you will be able to publish into the queue. So. You will, you will never even receive the order because the worker goes unresponsive. So 
so this is the capacity planning you need to do. So you need to go for um, multiple workers so that you always rely on one worker when one goes unresponsive. Okay, so then we will come back here and then see the frequency in which orders are created. Now we have uh, fulfillment that's happening by, uh, I mean, one order for five seconds. That's how uh, the order processing system retrieves. So you need to do some math here. Suppose if uh, 10,000 orders are received, uh, say, uh, in an eight uh, business hours, then uh, you need to do a math. And uh, the, now, nowadays, SLA is uh, orders are processed uh, uh, in two days or three days, or sometimes it happens in the same day. So you need to have this frequency set uh, according to the number of orders you are predicting. You need to do the math, uh, like uh, divide the number of orders by uh, minutes, and then say, uh, if the order fulfillment system uh, has the necessary uh, personnel to address that many orders uh, uh, in a day, then accordingly, you decide a number of workers and uh, uh, number of vehicles. So normally, MuleSoft suggests to have two workers with one vehicle for 1,000 requests per minute. And uh, if you want to have 10,000 requests per minute, then you, can, you have to um, either vertically scale uh, or horizontally scale. So you can't scale more than uh, one vehicle because one vehicle is the highest uh, per worker. So you can try to have uh, uh, four workers or eight workers if uh, the incoming capacity is increased eight times over 1,000 requests per minute. And coming back to this messaging system, uh, now we have this uh, uh, VMQ, which is maintained by uh, MuleSoft. Suppose you want to scale it uh, uh, in a different way. Uh, for example, um, some systems use uh, Apache Kafka where you can uh, scale the number of requests like uh, 100,000 requests per minute or um, even thousands of requests uh, uh, per second. So uh, because uh, Apache Kafka has an internal capability to scale vertically, horizontally for any number of requests because it is designed that way. And we will see uh, how the Apache Kafka works in a completely different video. And I think I have covered end-to-end uh, -end on the design principles and guidelines uh, with a working use case, uh, which I wanted to do. I think I have done that. Uh, sorry for the long video and duration because uh, uh, I thought I should explain it in a detailed way without rushing so that you can take uh, some of the design principles or all while you are working on the design aspects. And uh, while you are working on these design, ask good questions on the requirements and uh, good questions on the capacity planning and good, good questions on the volume of uh, requests that you are expecting and what is the peak period and uh, go back and do the capacity planning whether uh, your APAs are handled and throttled in order to handle this peak period and uh, peak volume time. And also you need to work on the order SLA in such a way that uh, whatever orders are received and you publish into the message queue and the database, you should be able to process within that particular day. And then accordingly, you can plan for number of workers and uh, worker size and the JMS uh, capacity uh, and all that you can do it accordingly. So thanks for watching this video and uh, hope you enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed and if you felt this is useful and please click the like button and please subscribe my videos. And I'll try to come up with uh, more interesting topics soon. Thank you. Bye.